The Cell 4 are extremely iconic villains in the Naruto series. They may not have been the strongest villains our heroes had to face, but they are certainly very important for the story and their fights were very good. Among themselves, who is the strongest? It's an interesting question because unlike most of the other organizations or even groups of villains or heroes in the series like the Akatsuki or the Hokages which I've ranked before, the difference in strength between the weakest to the strongest member of the Cell 4 is is not as massive as in the Akatsuki, for example. Like, if you compare Hidan to Obito, it's gonna be an abyss of difference, but the Sound 4 is not like that. With that in mind, let's begin to rank them so we can reach a final conclusion. Number 4 and the weakest Sound 4 member is Jirobo. I don't think this is a surprise for anyone, honestly. Jirobo is more often than not treated as the weakest of the Sound 4. A lot of people rank him very low because he lost a fight to Ch Choji. In most situations, this would be a fair argument. However, this Choji right here is not your regular Choji. He ate a pill that amplified his strength 100 times. Red pill Choji would beat anyone in the South 4, simply because it's a complete and utter hack. Regarding Jirobu's own capabilities, he doesn't have a very versatile arsenal. He has a lot of Earth-style jutsus that can be powerful and cover a big range. However, I can see the other members of the sound for easily dodging all of those jutsus and he also has taijutsu going for him he is definitely the strongest one physically in his group but still not that threatening for the other members if Jirobo uses the curse mark level 2 for instance the other members can also use it to counter him and it would be a stalemate anyway the only dangerous jutsu Jirobo has that could threaten the other members of the sound 4 is that dome of earth that can drain the chakra from the ones within but as the sound 4 kind of know each other's abilities, they would know how to counter it, they would know to destroy the section that's further away from Jirobo, and they would all have means to do so. Kitomaru could shoot a very powerful arrow and destroy the thing, Tayuya can summon her big guys and destroy the Dome of Earth, and Sakon could just simply summon the Hashimon and burst him out of there. Jirobo wouldn't really have much of an answer here to combat the Sound 4, so his last place. Before we move on to number 3, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. This is a game that has one of the most unique mechanics for RPGs that I have ever seen. You can download it for free with my link in the description below and you will receive an amazing starter pack. Bloodline Heroes of Lithus is a hero collector RPG fantasy game with a 3D art style and in there you can build your own kingdom, collect your champions and defend the world. But what's better is that you can create your own unique legendary champion by combining bloodlines of elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, lichens, dragonborns, vampires, and all sorts of amazing fantasy races. And now is the best time for you to try out Bloodline as the game's having its best update to date. The new Lycan clan, Goltung, is coming back this Christmas with a sleek design. They are the most brutal damage dealers that can be found in the game, with different weapons and skill sets on each gender. And you can combine this brand new lineage of Bloodlines with the existing ones to have even stronger hybrids. But this is only for a limited time. Time. Players will only be able to obtain a Gold Tongue Champion for free by participating in the Christmas event starting December 22nd. And starting this December, all players can enjoy battling in the new Guild War, Valley of Conquerors on brand new maps and being rewarded with legendary hybrids. You can conquer territories with your guild and claim rewards to create the most unique hybrid champions called Bloodcraft Legends. For the first season, everyone has a chance to claim Scarlet, a rare Bloodcraft Champion, which is a rare combination of demigods and vampires. You can gather your team and start playing now so you can get her for free by simply beating your enemies. New bloodlines and legendary hybrids are constantly being released in the game, which means there are endless possibilities for you to seek out the greatest hybrid to suit your style. Download the game for free right now on both Android and iOS, and you can use the link in the description below to get a special starter pack worth $20 that grants you 3 stamina potions, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamonds. And you can also get the new light can champion for free this Christmas. So don't waste any time and download the game for free right now using the link in the description or the QR code showing up on screen. Moving on to number three, Sakon and Ukon. I'm treating both of these characters as one singular entity because they essentially are. I don't know why, but a lot of people say that Sakon is the strongest one. I've never seen that statement in a data book or anything like that. Maybe it's just one of those statements that's thrown around and it sticks, but it's clearly not the case. 
case. Sakon is the leader of the group, he definitely commands them and gives them orders, but being the leader of a group doesn't mean you're the strongest one. Just look at the rescue team in the very same arc. Shikamaru is not the strongest member of the rescue team, and yet he is the leader. The problem with Sakon is that he doesn't really have that much to begin with. He has this very exotic taijutsu style because he can use Ukon's limbs from anywhere in his body to attack, but he doesn't punch that hard. He punches Kiba a couple of times and Kiba is fine after the punches. He also has the Hashimon, which is very powerful for defense, but it's a very niche application. It only works when you can predict a long-ranged attack or someone dashing at you like Kiba dashed at him. They can be very easily bypassed. Sakon and Ukon can split themselves and become two people when they are in the curse mark level 2. Yeah, they have two people in the fight now. Naruto can create a thousand shadow clones. Granted, Ukon's probably stronger than a mere shadow clone would be, but still, they don't do much more than Taijutsu in the entire fights that they are in. Naturally, the strongest ability Sakon and Ukon have access to is the ability to infiltrate someone else's body, and that is powerful. Sakon uses that on Kiba, it just happened. We don't know if there's any setup you have to do, but even if you're assuming that it's pretty easy to put someone under that, they have to be in the curse mark stage 2, which is very consuming for the body. And we see that there's a pretty easy way to counter it. Granted, it's a sacrifice because you have to stab yourself, you have to essentially harm yourself to harm Sakon while in that state, but it can be done and Kiba did that perfectly. We also have to analyze Sakon's opponents and Kiba is by far the weakest member of the Leaf Squadron. He is much weaker than Choji, especially when Choji takes the pills. And yeah, his big Akamaru transformation is not weak or anything, but he's just not as powerful as the others. And sure, Sakon won the fight against Kiba, but it wasn't that easy. He only lost because Kankuro arrived and killed him, but still, Kiba is not the most threatening opponent. I can see the other members of the Sound 4, with the exception of Jirobu, taking care of Kiba rather easily. Moving on to number 2, Taiyuya. A lot of people put her in the strongest position as well, however, I disagree with that. Taiyuya has her big summons that she can control with her flute, and they are powerful and strong, but they can be dodged. We saw Shikamaru taking care of them rather easily, to be honest. Granted, Shikamaru is a genius, but I can see someone that's faster than him doing the same thing just with sheer speed and not intellect. These summons also have the ability to drain some chakra with that strange ghost-like thing they spit, which can be very useful, don't get me wrong. Tayuya's curse mark stage 2 is not that powerful. Of course, she gets a boost in her physical capabilities, but her own powers don't really grow that much when she gets the transformation. And we saw she was essentially stalemating Shikamaru on curse mark 2. An experienced ninja can also predict the movements of her summons because she has to use her fingers to play the flute. And that's how Shikamaru counterattacked Tayuya. So it's definitely not as though those summons are extremely powerful or anything like that. What people claim to be the most effective jutsu in Tayuya's arsenal is Mugen Onsa, her flute genjutsu that she caught Shikamaru on. And it's funny because a lot of people mention the feat in the war arc when Kabuto used that genjutsu and put Sasuke and Itachi under it instead of using Tayuya's own feat. Because it's very obvious that Kabuto is a billion times stronger than Tayuya. Even though there was Tayuya's jutsu, besides Itachi and Sasuke were able to break out of it. You can argue they wouldn't be able to do it by themselves, but we saw Shikamaru doing it just fine. He broke his finger with his own shadow, essentially hurting himself. This is how to break out of Genjutsu 101. You inflict self-harm. And Shikamaru was able to control his shadows even though he was paralyzed by the Genjutsu. So it's not as though the Genjutsu is completely 100% debilitating. If you can bite your own lips like Kurenai did to break herself out of Itachi's reversal Genjutsu, you can probably break out of Mugen Onsa as well. Still, Tayuya is very powerful. She can definitely take out Sakon and Jirobu more often than not if they were to fight on 101. And now moving on to the number one strongest member of the Sound 4, Hitomaru, the Spider Boy. Hitomaru is here for a lot of reasons actually. First, he is the most versatile fighter in the entire squad. He is a very powerful ranged fighter, however he can deal with close quarters combat. He has 8 limbs, so that gives him an edge in taijutsu exchanges as well. His defense is by far the best among the sound 4, because he can use that strange layer of metallic protection that he used to counter Neji's gentle fist, and he can simply do that with his sweat glands. Essentially creating an armor around your entire body, and 
yeah, he could tank a powerful blow. The 64 palms are not a weak jutsu by any means. Kitomaru's web is also insanely powerful. It was able to stop multiple Jonin Anbu members that were tasked to protect the third Hokage during the assaults on the Leaf Village. And these webs are extremely durable and difficult to cut through. The only things we ever see cutting through them are the gentle fist from the Hyuga clan and Amaterasu. So you can safely say that nobody else in the Sound 4 would be able to cut through these webs and they would be just done for whenever they get hit by them. He also has definitely the most powerful summon in the entire Sound 4 squad. That big spider that spawns smaller spiders is very annoying. It's essentially a big swarm that was very problematic for Neji himself. He can also use the same liquid that he used to make his own armor and create weapons that he can throw from a distance or even use it in melee. His second stage curse mark is also the most powerful among his squad. He gains a bow and arrow essentially. He can create that with the same fluid he uses for the weapons and the armor but then with the curse mark 2 stage his arrows punch like a truck. They were destroying everything on their path in the forest. The trees were nothing for those arrows and they were able to get Neji more than once. It's even implied that the arrows were powerful enough to overpower Neji's rotation because Neji doesn't even and try to rotate to block the arrow. He just hangs the hit but moves out of the way just enough so that it's not a fatal blow. And we can also analyze Kitomaru's opponent, Neji, who's by far the strongest guy in that squad from the Leaf Village. Now he's not stronger than Naruto with the Nine Tails' chakra, but in base he is much stronger. And sure, Kitomaru lost the fight, but it was extremely high diff. Neji almost died in that fight and Kitomaru almost got him. Seriously, do you see Neji struggling that much against the other members of the Cell 4? Because I don't. He's also pretty damn smart too, being able to figure out how the Byakugan works just by fighting Neji once. So this guy deserves number one in this list. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't so already. Watch this other video right here for more entertaining content. Like this video too to help me out and thank you so much for watching.